Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I've got to take a week off to change the light bulbs and the map projectors, so I hope you'll enjoy this remastered version of Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues, Episode 3, Maps. I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research, and I still wouldn't look at this one without embarrassment. But every time I glanced at it, there was something unresolved. Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Welcome back to the third episode of Mark Sargent's Flat Earth and Clueless. Today we're going to ask a rather rhetorical question. Can Mark Sargent actually read a map? Now one thing that I did notice when I first started looking into the Flat Earth is everybody in Flat Earth seems to love this Gleason's map, which is an AE map that is a polar projection off the North Pole. They like to say that there is no such thing as the South Pole. If they actually knew how to read the map, they would realize that the entire outer rim of the map is 90 degrees south, and 90 degrees south is a single point. It is the South Pole. So even though I have my serious reserves that Mark can actually read maps, let's go ahead and let him explain. Flat Earth Clues, Part 3, The Map Makers. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat Earth system we live in, and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into the USGS, otherwise known as the Map Makers of the World, and a few surprising things that they and others have in common with the Flat Earth idea. USGS stands for United States Geological Survey, a scientific branch of the U.S. government. Formed in 1879, and with the help of the ever-expanding American Empire, America, land of fast food and firearms, they quickly became the pre premier map makers of the known world. They also have extensive science departments covering biology, geography, geology, hydrology, and many programs tied to them. What does this large, really boring government group have to do with the Flat Earth? To understand that, you have to look into their origins, which is in geography. To do this, you'll need to open another page that specializes in maps. The wiki list of map projections isn't much to look at as a whole, although there are a number of interesting takes in the world view. Not only do they have just about every perspective when it comes to the land we live on. He said perspective, fill out your bingo card. But some detailed information on where the map originated, including name type, the origin or creator, and the year the map perspective was proposed. There are a number of variations here. If you keep going down through all the different shapes, you'll get into circular maps. But only one of these is a top-down perspective that shows the continents in the center surrounded by an unbroken ring of ice. In wiki, it's called the azimuthal equidistant. And just to make it easier, I'm going to abbreviate and call it AE for short. Now before Mark goes much further, I'd like to make a point here, and that is that AE maps can be centered anywhere on the Earth. They don't have to be centered on the North Pole. This one, for example, is centered on Sydney, Australia. Sorry to interrupt, Mark. Do continue. Why is this map so interesting? Well, if you're looking at the wiki page, you'll spot a few reasons. The first is that in the notes section of the map, and I quote, used by the USGS in the National Atlas of the United States. Yes, indeed, Mark. The USGS does have a National Atlas of Maps. Here's the page. Wait a minute. That's not an AE map there. Shoot, Mark. These aren't AE maps either. You don't think they have more than one map in the National Atlas, do you? It also mentions that it is used as the emblem of the United Nations. Of all the maps on this screen, it is the only one that references a group of any kind. And if you keep this page open and navigate over to the Flat Earth section of Wiki, you'll notice towards the bottom of the page a similar map. I've referenced it here, and you can tell quite easily it's identical, but not referenced or linked as the AE model. You know, Mark, you may be onto something. This is the official map of the Cat Earth Society. I don't think this is mentioned either. To make things even more strange, we go back to the USGS model, and you see that it was first proposed a thousand years ago. And you may think, well, that's a bad link. So you compare it with the person who proposed it, and you get this guy, Al Biruni, 
Who was Al Biruni? Well, he lived around a thousand years ago and was considered one of the greatest scholars of his era, schooled in multiple sciences. Yes, he was quite a remarkable scientist. As a matter of fact, from the same wiki article that you got your data out of, I found this illustration. At the top is his explanation of the phases of the moon in orbit around the Earth, and at the bottom is how he calculated the circumference of the spherical Earth. You know, here's a quick question for you, Mark. You tell us to do our own research, yet when we look at your research, we find that you neglect to mention certain critical pieces of information, such as this gentleman that you're talking up calculating the circumference of the spherical Earth. Have you ever heard of him? I hadn't. Maybe it's multiple bad references in Wiki. Well, no, because NASA knows who he is and named this moon crater after him. So why is the USGS using a version of the world map designed by a thousand-year-old Persian scientist? Because it's correct. Mark, that's all maps are projections of the globe. All maps are correct. They are distorted based on what kind of projection they are, and part of the ability to read a map is to understand what distortions are in that particular projection. But really, the take-home message here is that the Earth is a three-dimensional sphere, and to get it on a two-dimensional map, you're going to have some distortions. Simply because there are some distortions does not make the map incorrect. So to be clear, Let's compare them again. The United Nations flag, the USGS official map of the Earth, and the Flat Earth model. All identical, but one isn't recognized and instead ridiculed as an outdated look at the world. No, Mark. The map is the map. It is a representation of the Earth based on a projection. What is ridiculed is your interpretation of one particular version of a polar AE map as representing an actual model of the Earth. And this is one of those political quandaries that the authority gets stuck in. The short version is this. The government is on the same page as the flat Earth, but they can't admit it even in confidence. We know the Earth isn't flat, they say, but it really is. No, Mark, it really isn't flat. And you keep referring to the government. There are something like 154 governments in the world. I know you desperately want to be the whistleblower, the one person that tells everybody the real truth. But before we listen to you with that, I think you should demonstrate that you can at least get the Boy Scout map reading merit badge. So far, you're falling a little short. We know you use the same map as we do, but ours is just an image. And anyone who says differently is obviously crazy. It makes you wonder how long the USGS has been using that model as an official reference. The United Nations started using it for their logos in 1945, and then made some final adjustments in 1947. And the UN flag also raises a few questions, like... Why isn't Antarctica represented on the map? Is it supposed to be assumed in the outer circle, or perhaps the spiky olive branches on the outside? They don't mention it anywhere online. Funny, Mark. I just went online and typed meaning of UN emblem into Google, and I came up with this. But just to help you out a little bit, this says that the UN emblem is a stylized AE projection on the North Pole going down to 60 degrees latitude which, as you know, is well above Antarctica. And the olive branches around the uh, border? What is the traditional meaning of olive branches? This is an organization dedicated to world peace. I think olive branches in their emblem is quite appropriate, don't you? And this is what I like to focus on. The gaps. The holes in the plot. The unanswered questions. The USGS using the same map as the Flat Earth, but not saying why, not recognizing it, or that you can't link the very same image from the Flat Earth wiki back to the actual AE definition of the projection. Seriously, Mark, it's just a map projection. There's nothing sinister about it, really. The authority figured out in the 1950s all of the borders of our enclosed world and have done a great job hiding it over the decades. But the world's a complex place, and there are clues out there just lying around. I think it's time you saw some of them. Okay, Mark, we've got to put this to bed now. You've asked us to go out and do our own research. Well, I have. It's a map projection, Mark. 
just a map projection. Here's one centered on Sydney, Australia. But I think what I need to do is just give you a visual. So I'm going to go back to the excellent animation of Joe's Lays and let him explain the AE map to you. This is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey guys, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. These videos are getting thousands of views and hundreds of likes. Let's see if we can bring those numbers a little closer to the number of views. Alright? We'll see you again soon.